take a closer look at this and he's like no no don't go I said what do you mean don't go it's right there he unholsters his pistol he's like I'm going to said, put that away but he was then ready. we looked at that and that was like man didn't do that yeah man did not put that together right and then we saw a 15 inch footprint near it I said man didn't put that thing together it is against, and the weather didn't put it together. Right. It's not good. You snap a tree without the tree falling. Mm -hmm. And you can see the tree. I got some up close pics of the tree where it was not cut. Mm -hmm. It was snapped. Yeah. But not all the way. Just put it in place. Mm. Yeah, that's, yeah. That's where the big groups are at. One of the guys in our group lives down near Cherryville. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the whole. He would, put us up for a day if we needed to needed a host mm -hmm. oh yeah because I'm friends with him on Facebook and we interact quite a bit yeah do you guys think the Sasquatch are connected with the cemetery like maybe they interacted with the people that used to live here the locals well these Sasquatch you know how long do you think they live I think personally they live a long time maybe like 150 200 years old they, they might. and it's hard for them to to have little ones like that's a special process I well, think it so. seems like they breed but they don't breed a lot you know mm-hmm yeah <coughs> like Parker on his property says about 20 five adult males four adult females and between juveniles and kids about 20 all together mm -hmm. you think there'd be more kids yeah but see i suspect there's like seven or eight in my group but yeah. i think there's up to like 12 or maybe more but on the thing of the uh, cemeteries i think they're fascinated with cemeteries i don't know why but uh do you think we're right in there or farther one i yeah. take care of a cemetery and i've had uh, 
some reactions there. I haven't seen nothing, but mm. uh, Mike's son had a log throw at him from the back up tree in there, canopy. Far back up in there. Mm. But mm. they have a fascination with cemeteries. They visit frequently in general in the rural areas. Now, are the but tombstones like? Are, is there like a certain type of rock that they use that's like high in energy? Do you guys know anything about that? I, I really don't know. Okay. Well, being more in tune to the earth and forest people, if you know, I, it wouldn't surprise me none if they knew mm -hmm. a lot more stuff than what we did about the woods and the earth. Yeah, I agree. But they do have a fascination with cemeteries, <clears throat> and I do not know why. <clears throat> it's just tough to say. You know, mm. we're, you know, just babies and learning about this stuff. Um, I don't know if you told that story. It's no, pretty, I didn't. pretty interesting. That was the deal. This was before we even discovered our, our North Cape County research area it, with the activity. Mm -hmm. This is, we had our deal on May the 11th of 2019 in Crawford County mm -hmm. where we saw the structure in a footprint with my son. And he was like, you know, and what he thought was mythological at that point started to start bringing some reality into him. Mm -hmm. And we were, him and my daughter-in-law, and they weren't, they were just an engaged couple at that time. Fourth of July, 2019, we're all just hanging out at the pool at my house. Mm -hmm. You know, barbecue, pool, fourth of July, talking about going and seeing a fireworks display that night. And we start talking about this Bigfoot stuff and, and my son's like now the cemetery Steve takes care of is about 10 miles from Cape Girardeau city limits mm -hmm. about, about 10 miles from the house and I was there with him one day and saw a footprint because he called me had me come look at it saw a 19 inch footprint saw a bedding area where something real big had been bedded down in some Easter lilies and and you know I said well I said, I can show you some stuff 10 miles from here. Mm -hmm. So he said, let's go. So those two and me, you know, he got changed and put, you know, I drove them out there. We drove up there and we're there at the cemetery. Now the, the Mississippi River was flooded that mm -hmm. summer. So we think a lot of them were run out of the lowlands. And so I'm up in this Easter lilies and there's a, the, the bed where they were bedding in May was dried up and there was a new fresh bed, bedding area mm -hmm. and some that hadn't been overslept on. So I was kind of examining that area and they're off looking around, going over and looking around. They go over to the fence, the other side of the fence, there's the woods and the trees and a ravine going down and next thing you know, I see those now I hear some things in the trees and I'm just assuming it's squirrels and I'm not paying attention to those two I'm looking at this area where mm -hmm. there's been some bedding and next thing I know my son and daughter-in-law are running across the cemetery I said what are you guys doing he goes did you see that so what he goes that he said something threw two logs in through the treetops toward their direction about 18 inches long two three inches in diameter mm -hmm. little little twigs you know one comes flying through the forest canopy then he said he heard something scampering across the the ground and then another one comes flying through the core forest canopy i said well i said here's what i speculate could be the squatches could be little juniors out playing somewhere and you guys are over there maybe it spells danger let's divert their attention and get him back over here to safety mm -hmm. I said it worked I went over there to the fence and nothing just pure silence but that's but, but the you see yeah they, they, they come well it had to be people over there throwing things and there weren't any people over there right something had to throw them. yeah so took hands to do that. Yeah. So, so I thought that was interesting. And that was a cemetery. Right the ground up here, though. So you found a track here. Right here. Really? Right here. Right here somewhere. Yeah. I, I, I tried to cast it and it rained. 
about two hours later that it didn't turn out. Yeah. And this is hard ground too. Now, is that a bathroom over there? Yeah. Okay. They call those outhouses. I know what they call it. <laughs> For you city people. Yeah, I hear you. My brother Scott, when he bought his property, he had And that print was heading this way. So it was heading down that? Head right into yeah. there. Okay. Back into the pines. So if you're thinking they live over there in those pines, and I'm thinking over here, <laughs> we could it. have a couple of groups. Well, yeah, well, very well could be. That, that's just it, Bill. A couple of groups out here. You look around me, and all you see are miles and miles of hilly woods. Yep, yep. There's no telling how many live down in here. Well, I guarantee it's more than one. Well, yeah, we know that, but but the habitat supports several different clans of these things living down through here, and people not even knowing about it. Yeah, you know, there's at least two of them because last week we found that 15 to 16 inch, and the one behind the cabin was 20. That's two different sized yeah. ones right there. And they could have been both up there the same night. You just don't know it. Yeah. And Ooh. my guess is your dogs are okay with them because they're not barking up a storm all the time with them. They're not dead. And they're not dead. So. Yeah. They never try to mess with your dog? Not that I know of. Mm -hmm. Not that I know of. Yeah. I think that was just, a worry. Yeah. But your dogs, do they like run out to the woods barking? Oh yeah. There yeah. are nights when they'll be off in there chasing something, barking at something. Mm -hmm. Maybe some get along with the dogs and some <clears throat> don't. Yeah, I guess. You never can tell. A little deer meat could but, persuade dogs to be quiet and befriend them somehow. Too. Oh, yeah. It's just true. my opinion. Yeah. Yeah. It could happen. That's what you would do if you were going on yeah. somebody's property and you don't want the dogs to alert you. It's like yeah, throwing the T-bone steak and the junkyard dog. Mm -hmm. you know? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, it's, a... it's possible. can't say often, but I've heard them a lot. You heard them today. Yeah. But I'm out here outside, especially in the summertime, all the time. No telling what I would have heard if I hadn't run that lawnmower so much. Yeah. When I was outside painting that deck, one came around up in here and was hollering at the, at the dog holler, like the one I could dog being tore apart. This is kind of interesting here. These are actually trees. If you look up, the limbs aren't very big. Mm -hmm. They're actually trees snapped off and kind of piled up. Yeah, maybe it's an old structure, but. Yeah, it's dark. It definitely seems like that one was thrown, so. That is odd within itself. And then if he was here, he could see everything that's down there. Yep. And I also see an arch right there. See that arch yeah. in the back? Bent right over to the ground and fell down. Mm -hmm. A lot of times when we see stuff like this, you'd be walking through the woods and uh, you don't you only find them like in cluster areas. I found out in my mm -hmm. research area, if you want to come down sometime, there's a hilltop and uh, it's about a hundred yard circle and there's 90 degree bends everywhere. Yeah. And you can't ever see them until like this time of year or winter time. So, mm -hmm. but it's like a hundred yard circle going up area on top of this hill and coming down a little bit. And I've heard sounds and made one of my big 24 inch casts, you know, within a hundred yards of that area. Mm -hmm. Look at this. Look at this. Just a second. Possibly could be a little foot. Yeah, yeah, I see it. And it's about 10 inches. Quite possible, but with the leaves and pine needles being 8 inches thick, it dispersed some of the energy. And mm. with being a rocky ground, you could never cast that. I hear some gunshots. Yeah.
I mean, there's not really a pine tree next to here. Oh, okay, those right there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that is kind of weird. It's broken two places. You know? I don't know if it's rotten or it's just been here a while, but it could have been snapped by the squatch. Yeah, it's not that weird. rotten that it would have fell over, so mm -hmm. it's quite possible. If you look over there, that tree's got a bend in it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And there's a couple 90 degree turns over there too. Uh, I've just seen a real good one. Um, that one over there's got a little twist in it. That one's got a bend. Mm -hmm. I've seen one with a good... So there's a lot of bent trees here. There's one with a bend, just a little one. And I've seen a really good one. Ooh, two of them are twisted together yeah, down there. Yeah, I see they, that. Keep, I'm gonna go check it out. Tuck it in there for placement. Mm -hmm. This thing has been strategically placed here by yeah. something. I feel the same way. There's more better stuff down there. Well, I'm not going to go down there and keep those dogs stirred up. But, and the tree is too dry for it to be deadfall, as you said. Oh, it's not rotten that it fell over. Yeah. Well, and if it fell over, would it break in two different places like that, that low to the ground? No. Yeah, I know what no. you mean. It's broken in several places. Even the tip is broken off. There's a uh, down in the woods. Mm -hmm. I don't know if that's them doing the limb popping on here, but these are all popped off. Sometimes you'll see on a forest where a wind gust will come, and uh, all the trees are in one certain direction. Mm -hmm. you definitely know that's not Bigfoot. Yeah. Got one. One tree. <clears throat> You got a strategic placement, I think. Could be a marker. For a certain reason. Mm -hmm. it, well, it just could be a directional to guide a path. Yeah, like mm -hmm. across the road here. Yeah. Quite possible. I don't it's know. pointing right towards the cemetery. Yeah, pointing towards the cemetery. What the hell? Yeah, we're coming. It's all kinds of little stuff, little soda bottles, uh, wood pieces like it was intentionally put there mm -hmm. and it was in the part of the county where it's very desolate of human population so yeah. uh could you think it was a depository from the creek when it rose no not everything like that in one one hole mm -hmm. yeah that makes sense I, I hear from a lot of people they like to collect bottles and mm -hmm. little things that they put in their gifting site whether it's toys or balls little knickknacks yeah uh, shiny rocks uh, one time at my research area, we had uh, went to a natural spring, and the next time we went there, where it come out of the ground, there was a beer can laying right there in place, mm -hmm. and it was an old beer can. It's like, how did that get there? Right. right in the middle. Makes you wonder. Yeah. The, uh, I think it was last year, year before, I had uh, a gifting tomb at the cemetery. I. Uh, oversee and take care of and uh, I got these shiny glass rocks that look like pearls from a flower pot at my mom's and I placed them out there mm -hmm. and they would be moved around some taken one time they were completely gone me and Mike went back the next time I mean I even looked on the ground scraped it all gone mm -hmm. come back the next time they were all back yeah yeah is that a beer on top of that one yep no matter what on all summer didn't it Mike every time we go there yeah. the, rock, the rocks would be moved around but that was the summer of 19 when that river was up yeah and that was in South Cape County which we've had some Bigfoot activity there mm -hmm. I overlooked that cemetery I 
<laughs> one funny thing about it is uh, one time I was there, I was playing on my phone. I heard something, so I'm like, eh, it's probably Squatch. So I'll walk up the little hill and uh, it's very steep. And once I got to the top, I kind of went like this, stuck my head over as soon as I did. I heard a response. It was uh, two, two Bigfoot. They weren't alpha males or nothing, but one did a, a crow and the other one did a hoot owl right next to each other. Mm -hmm. And you could, it, they were all over the place. It wasn't that good. But the funny thing about the story is at the very end when I definitely knew it was Squatch is the one uh, doing the call started coughing. <coughs> I thought that was kind of funny. Yeah. You never know. How often do you get a response? No, not often. I mean, do you think they come in later on that night though, after you do the calls? Like maybe that? Yeah, yeah they come in, they come, they definitely come in later on. As I don't do the calls at, at night often, I'm not outside that much at night. Mm -hmm. But I do do them at daytime and I've not got back a response in the daytime. Well, no, that was at night. Yeah, last weekend I said, Bill, do, do a call and he did and we got a response and we got it twice. Uh, we don't think they were alpha males, but mm -hmm. they, they were probably close to a mile off. We all, three or four of us heard it. One of the guys here didn't hear it though. But he's kind of hard to hear. <laughs> Mike, do you think they're going to come in tonight? Well, you know what? We've given them enough noise to know they got some, there's something going on up here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we, done, we did some calls. There's than, apples. A little more noise than normal mm -hmm. at the Rummage House. If they don't, though, it's probably because I'm here. You know, they're not used to different people. You know, maybe they like interacting well, with you when it's just you. Steve was here for the first time last weekend. Mm -hmm. And obviously they had him right behind the, you know, right behind the cabin. Yeah. They didn't realize it overnight. Yeah. So. But Lulu the, ne the next morning was pretty adamant about going behind there and smelling and she wouldn't let it go. And I finally, me and Bill were working on something, a tree. And I said, Bill, we're going to have to check that out. Mm -hmm. Lulu's giving me that look. We did. That's when we if found we that If we sit build a fire and sit around that fire for a while, I, I, I talk. I, my guess is they'll probably... Venture closed. Yeah. Do a couple hauls about every half an hour so you can bring them in a little closer. Well, but they're already close. They could be right there at the woodland right now. You never see them. If they're already close though, they, they'll know it's us howling. That's my take on that anyway. Yeah, maybe they'll give us a localization. You want to put her in the cabin? It's going to be cold in there. Don't put her on the bed. She's comfortable in here. What are you going to do with her? She's going to stay in the squad staying in the tree line and not coming, you know, not coming out. Mm -hmm. They've been in, and it's been dark, and I'm like, and this is beyond, this is when I quit shining, you know, shining spotlights and stuff like that because I don't, you know, I just I screw the rest of the night up. You have that plain as day, face to face type interaction, old sighting. But, you know, if it... I think it'll happen for it, you just because your attitude. It doesn't... It doesn't um, bother me that I haven't had it. Mm -hmm. And, you know, my sister has, or Matt has, or Steve has, or Bill has. It doesn't, doesn't, really, doesn't really bother me as much. Because, I I mean, I don't doubt... I mean, obviously, you know, they are real and they are there, and I know that. And the time will come, you know, mm -hmm. like you say, the, um, but my son played college baseball down at Murray State University. And, and, and of course, when he grew up and we were sports family and into sports and all that stuff, and I didn't take him hunting, very seldom took him fishing, him or, or my daughter, because we were always doing sports. You know, when he got done, when he played his last college baseball game, the realization was that was it. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yes, and he said, Daddy, he says, we we got to do something to keep having something we can do together. Would you, if I took up hunting, would you hunt with me? Fishing. Yeah, I would. But then when going to the public area, because we didn't have any private land connections in our area, going to the public area and seeing the first time out seeing Sasquatch activity mm -hmm. 
I totally lost my desire to hunt and gained a new desire to research. Yeah. <laughs> and I don't want the squatch is the relationship I'm trying to build with them in that area. I don't want them to associate me as the guy with a gun. Mm-hmm. You know? And and my son will you know, and he hunts, you know, bow and, and, and rifle and a lot of times he wants me to go out with him because he just feels more comfortable knowing that there are squatches in the woods if I'm with him. Mm-hmm. Because he knows they don't bother me. <laughs> and 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 uh, and they still bother him, just mm-hmm. being in the presence. Kind of, you know, he's 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 not crazy about that. Yeah. <laughs> and so we, so we we so I'll, a lot of times I'll go out, you know, I'll go out with him, and and um, be that support system. But I I don't want to. I really don't want to be the hunter I let you know, I'm nothing against hunting I mean I love eating the game I love mm-hmm. eating you know it's it's just something I thought you know I, I really rather do this and I don't want to you know have the two confused mm-hmm. it's a lot more thrilling than hunting yeah because it always keeps you guessing and you just never know what, what's going to happen yeah do about every half an hour. Not too much though. I was out here one day one evening. It's about dusk. A little bit earlier than this. And right there at that wood line were two orbs. Two white orbs about that size. They were right there, and then she went right, just right, right through the middle of the woods, right on out. And I was out here two weeks later, same thing. Two white orbs about that far apart. Mm-hmm. This time I said, if that's anybody on the side by side, you better speak up. I'm gonna fix and start shooting. And they just went right, right through the woods, right on out, right across the road. See, that's what I. That's similar to what I saw when I had my experiences before my encounters were two orange orbs about that far apart floating through the woods about three or four feet off the ground yeah yeah and yeah i didn't want to go close to it because i didn't know what it was i was like this is something paranormal you know yeah it scared me uh, it yeah be alien technology too, if you believe in that stuff. well just... how far apart was it from your experience where that thing was or your encounter where it was oh that was a year okay but still the same area oh yeah so very close to the same area. Hmm. It was two of them. They're about that big round. They were about four or five foot apart, about, about this high up off the ground. Mm-hmm. And they just went. They weren't in a hurry either. When I first seen them, they were just there. We're moving. Then they just went right, right through the woods, right through the, right. Like they didn't move through the trees. Mm-hmm. They just went through a straight line right through right through the woods. Yeah. Oh. See, I thought it was two people with cell phones or lanterns, because that's kind of what it looked like covering through the woods, but yeah. it wasn't. Yep. <clears throat> Actually, what I've noticed too, the Bigfoot uh, vocalization usually starts about this time, when mm-hmm. the sun's set, and it's right that yep. time. Like they're maybe getting out from their caves or from sleeping all night or day and that they're starting to come out. Mm-hmm. I did I have noticed that though. About right right there at sunset. Yeah, same here. Alright, here we go. close to them and you want to provoke them use the uh, a call oh. mm-hmm. I've had them you know actually one was walking away from me the 750 pounder and uh, he wouldn't turn around but when I did that a call turned his big old head and looked right at me and that's when he uh, went in the woods start sh- grabbing the trees with his uh, hands while walking and shaking them that's in between steps and the uh, it was early spring and all the I don't know if it was a cherry tree or a redbud tree, but all the blossoms were 
falling down, and then mm -hmm. he made a big old holler, just like that. It provoked him. And another time, smoking you out. Yeah, me and my brother out of his house, up at my research area. Uh, we heard one, and he did that, and uh, I guess it set it off. It, it was pissed. Let me move around a little bit yeah. for you. It's not getting us over here. Another funny Bigfoot note is uh, a while back we went to church dinner and uh, my whole family was there, my one brother. He uh, he actually seen some with me back in the day when he was younger, but he had glasses and they're all fogged up and he's got bad eyes. But uh, he was there when he heard that one. But we went to my brother Scott's house. Uh, he had to get back. He rode out there with my parents. I'm like, okay, let's go out to Scott's. He's still at the picnic, church picnic. and. Uh, Maybe we can hear something because if my you don't know my brother Scott, but if you met him, you could if you was at Bigfoot camp, you wouldn't hear Bigfoot. But anyway, <laughs> uh, we're there about 20 minutes and uh, it started sprinkling. So uh, uh, I told my I grabbed a stick from the wood pile and I did a knock on the light pole, wood light pole. We were getting ready to leave and I'm like, let's see if this gets provoked. Some also told him that if you uh, we heard a little coyotes in the distance. I said, now listen, Bigfoot will sometimes set off the coyotes, and if you listen in the middle, sometimes they'll do a big yell. Because right before the coyote starts, something just odd makes a bellow. And we heard that twice. And he kind of looks at me like, huh. And right before we're leaving, I did grab the stick and did two knocks on a pole. Whack. Whack. Within a second, I had an instant response. It was a alpha male, <clears throat> for sure, by the tone and pitch. But it was funny. It was kind of like, uh, if you was to think why he did it, it was a response to it, like, "Hey, you kids, stop it" or something. You know, Bigfoot kids, little foots. But anyway, it, it did a grunt, and then it sneezed right at the end. It was like really long. He kind of stood up and looked at me. He's like, "That sounded a little wet," mm -hmm. and it was three quarters of a mile off. You could hear, <laughs> you could almost hear the spray droplets. He kind of stood up and looked at me. I'm like, "I told you." And another time, uh, I don't know if Mike told you this, we were at a, our research area, just like this, three of us, a guy named Willie, Mike, me, probably Lulu. I don't know if Lulu, yeah, Lulu was there. And uh, it was getting late, about 10, 10.30, and uh, I'm like, guys, can I do a knock, see if we get something in response? Because it, it was kind of quiet, and I did two knocks on the fence. I've never heard more than three knocks in my life, so we keep it three or less. I went, knock, knock. Did you guys hear that? But anyway. Uh, I heard it. The, uh, I did two knocks, knock, knock. And it sounded, you know, it was good. That we heard a, a Bigfoot probably 150 or about 125 yards away. And it, it started bellowing. Uh, it started winding up like a, uh, tornado siren but it lasted a good 30 seconds but by the tone and pitch you can tell it was a female she just Wah! just wailing away about last uh, 10 seconds of it she started uh, tapering down into an owl call without stopping you know and it, it wasn't a good owl call it was kind of frantic like kind of all over the place but yeah, without stopping, she went into a frantic owl call and it really wasn't that good of an owl. So no. we knew, you know, it was a female. And that's the time when we were discussing about Bigfoots making owl sounds. Mm -hmm. Sometimes they could be owls, sometimes they couldn't. And some of them are blatantly obvious, like let's say an alpha male. Uh, I call it the 800 pound owl. Mike calls it the baritone owl, but it's, I mean, it's deep. It's like, oh, it's kind of like that movie, John, uh, the Green Mile with John Coffey, the big guy, is like three times deeper that than that. Imagine him, you know, saying, ooh, really deep. Ooh, 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 ooh. I mean, ooh, ooh, deep. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Real deep voice. You can really? almost feel the ground vibrate almost. Mm -hmm. Now, when you guys hear vocalizations, is it pretty still outside? No wind. Oh yeah, if, if it's windy, you might as well just yeah, I've home. noticed that too. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, same here. Out in our research area, last year during that cold spell, it was you know negative five. I called my brother. I'm always texting him. Quiet out there, and he'll let me go check. And uh, he said for a week straight there during that cold spell, he didn't hear nothing. He said you could hear a pin drop. I mean nothing, no dogs, completely in utter silence. So that tells me they're probably hiding up in their 
fucker down in their caves or whatever. Caves probably where it's mm -hmm. 55 degrees yeah, or something. Yeah, when it gets that cold, they stay in. But it has to get really cold because I've seen them out there well, in snow on the ground. <laughs> We've had them, you know, we had last year January camping. We had them all through our all hours of the night hooping and hollering at us. Yep. That's with the adult males. He said, don't mess with them. They're I've the heard hunters. that too. He said, females would be curious about you, wouldn't mind, you know, a little activity with you. Mm. Because, you know, because they're just, well, the adult males are out hunting, they, there's something for them to do. Mm -hmm. And but they're accompanied, he said, by juvenile males, and juvenile males are curious, and they're going to be okay. He goes, but those adult males, he goes, you know, they're twelve foot tall. He goes, they're the hunters. He says, they're more businesslike, and yeah, you know, they're they're not up for. Yeah, I hear they stuff. don't they don't try to communicate very much as far as like interactions, yeah. and that's more the juveniles, and maybe they grow out of it. After a certain age, yeah, I would think become so. more solitude. Yeah, they could. They gotta um, feed the family, and they understand that. All right, so I'm gonna give you guys a rundown on what happened at Bill's property that night. I had showed up to Bill's to look around with understanding Bigfoot and try to find some evidence, and also the guys had agreed to do some interviews about their Bigfoot experiences. So later on, it got a little dark, and we had decided to do some Bigfoot vocalizations. Bill cracked one off, Steve did a call, and they looked at me and said, hey Miguel, why don't you do a vocalization? And I said, me? Uh, okay, sure, why not? So I did the vocalization that I had used at the Merrimack River in the past and had gotten a response. As soon as I did the call, we instantly got a response off to our far right. It was too far to tell what it was. It kind of sounded like a woo or something like that. I don't know, it could have been any animal. So at that point, we sit down at the fire. I got my GoPro running and it's my last battery. I got three batteries for each camera and the Sony, all the batteries are dead, the card's full. And with the GoPro, the batteries are pretty much all dead. I'm down to my last SD card and the night's pretty much over. I'm not really expecting much more to happen. So we're sitting around talking about our Bigfoot experiences and encounters and our theories and all of a sudden we hear this tree come crashing down over across the cabin. And we all turn at the same time and we're staring. And we're not sure really what it was. My first thought after that was, okay, Steve had been cutting down a tree with his chainsaw earlier and it got hung up on another tree and he tried pushing it down and getting it to fully fall down, but there, there was no budging this tree. So he decided to, to leave it. And that was my thought, was this tree that he tried to cut down finally came crashing down. And I think the other guys were on the same page or maybe thinking that as well. Well, a few seconds after that, we heard, we heard the classic wood knock. I mean, it sounded like Mark McGuire hit a home run with a wooden bat out of the park. And we all knew, we all gave each other that look of acknowledgement, like, okay, this is Bigfoot activity. So we all kind of wanted to run over there at the same time, but Mike said, hang on guys, let's not run over there and scare this thing off. We have talked about this in the past. Let's not run over there with cameras or whatever. So we had all, we all agreed to sit down around the campfire and experience and observe the Bigfoot activity. Let them come to us is the idea. So we sat there and just listened to this thing, do wood knocks, break limbs, and continue lifting up that tree and letting it crash down. So there came the point when I decided to ask Mike, okay, there's too much Bigfoot activity happening. I can't just sit here. Do you mind if I document a little bit of this? And Mike said, sure, why not? So Mike agreed to allow me to use my Zoom audio recorder to document some evidence. Now, you guys have to understand this isn't my property. I'm not out there to scare these things away and just run out there with a the camera. And also, I was invited by Mike from Understanding Bigfoot as a guest. So if they tell me don't pull out the camera and scare this thing away, the last thing I'm gonna do is pull out my camera and run over there and try to scare that thing away. 
So I hope you guys understand that. I know a lot of people won't understand that because they don't understand Bigfoot activity or don't even acknowledge Bigfoot as an existing being or creature. So I had taken the Zoom audio recorder and set it at the edge of the wood line right between the woods and the yard and pretty much hit record. So I've been going out for a long time since my encounters trying to interact with these things and finally I got my opportunity. So I asked the, the Bigfoot, will you do a tree knock? Will you push over a tree? And it didn't happen instantly, but it did happen that night. So whether they understand language or they understand our postures and I don't know, they can just feel us. I don't know, but it did happen. I did ask for a tree knock. I asked for it to push the tree down and both of those things happened within an hour. I would say at least 20 to 30 minutes. And that shocked me because that shows that they're able to understand and communicate with humans. So when they're observing us, they might potentially understand certain words we're saying or understand by our body language and posture. It's a possibility, guys. I would say the most exciting part was when I walked back from the campfire over to the edge of the wood line and I was standing there asking this thing questions and all of a sudden you could hear this limb crack. And all of a sudden this tree comes crashing down and I take a few steps back and I'm looking up and I can see the tips of the trees moving and I'm thinking this tree is coming down on me. You know, this thing is probably mad now and he pushed down this tree and it's probably getting ready to crush me. So I take a few steps back, the tree falls, and you can just hear a limb popping after that, some limb snapping, and I guess he'd taken that same tree, lifted it up, and let it crash down. Or he was coming up to it and grabbing a limb and pushing it down further and further. But we went back the next day to check to see if it pushed down a bunch of trees, but there wasn't really any other trees that were pushed down that we had noticed, but it did seem like the tree that was caught up did fall down a little further and we definitely know it wasn't due to gravity so there's this one point where mike steve and myself are over there observing the activity and all of a sudden bill comes rushing over there to us and says that he could hear something walking around over there by him when he was sitting there by himself by, at the campfire and I confirmed it later on because there was a point where the guys were over there by the cabin and I walked over across by the campfire and I could hear something walking around down there. And when I was up there observing the activity where this Bigfoot was at, by my audio recorder, I could hear another one walking towards us. So there was definitely around three that I heard walking around. And the strange thing is, I've seen them before, when they walk, you cannot hear them. They are pretty much silent. You might hear like a twig snap, but it's not very much. Not enough to make you think there's a large animal near you. If they want you to know, they will let you know. They can certainly be loud enough. There's another point at the campfire. We were sitting there and you could see Lulu stretching on Steve because she was sitting on Steve's lap and she was point, pointing that exact direction where the activity was occurring and she was just she was not happy with what was going on and she was definitely letting us know that there was something in the woods. And the crazy thing is, is the whole day she was running around letting Steve know what was going on around us. You know, come check out this hole on this shed and she'd run up to him and just start whining and yelping and turn around and go towards that hole, you know, trying to get him to look at stuff. And that's what Lulu does when she wants Steve to check out a track or if she smells something or if she picks up on any type of activity. She will let us know. Anyways, I had a really good time down in southeast Missouri at the Mark Twain National Forest out at Bill's property. I hope Mike from Understanding Bigfoot will have me out again as a guest. Sasquatch right in front of me. What's up, buddy? Why you gotta freak me out like that? This is an audio recorder. 
not a video camera. Hey buddy, you like pushing over trees? Can you push over a tree for me? This guy's been pushing over trees all night long, thrashing stuff through the woods, wood knocking, I mean solid knocks. Of course my cameras die when this stuff happens. But he is literally, I would say, about 12 yards right in front of me.
still there? I'm not here to hurt you, buddy. Can you give me a wood knock? Do you understand what I'm saying? So you still are here. Why do you break a limb every time I do a whistle? Okay. Okay. Holy crap. Yeah, I'm alright. Okay. <coughs> I'm leaving. I'm leaving. So you're literally 10 feet in front of me, aren't you? Um, thank you, I guess. That was really cool. So you're pretty strong, aren't you? Were you trying to push that tree on me or were you just being noisy? Because I saw the whole tree move right in front of me. That was insane. Like a big tree.
can you give me a knock for that apple? Or just some type of sound? Do you like it when I whistle? Like that? Okay, now if I stand up. Walk towards you. Two steps. That's what bothered you last time, is because I walked towards you. Is that why you pushed down that tree? Probably about eight feet in front of me. Are you throwing a rock when you do that? Is that rock throwing? Okay, buddy, I'm leaving. got what appears to look like the shape of the track. I don't know. It's hard to say. But there's some scratch marks in this tree right here. It's kind of weird. Gonna measure twenty and a quarter like I that could, one over there. I could the feel the cabin. something. There. What do you guys? You guys want to bet? I'm not a bet man. Actually, it's about twenty-four. About twenty-three. 23. Wow. Well, come here, Lulu. What is that? That Bigfoot? Smell. Come but on. I mean, last night when we had the activity, that thing was right there. Right well, behind that cedar, behind the tree you cut. Too, yeah, I heard one down there, and then over there. Yeah, where Bill was talking about. Yeah, they were. They were. This is actually bigger than that 20 inch one. Well, that would indicate it's another another big one here. Well, unless I'm measuring wrong, unless it starts here. It could here. be. It looks like the same shape of what we found down there at the creek. Well, well, I think the heel. If well, I'm the wrong, heel's not that thin though. That might that, just be part of. I, bet I think it's right here. I bet you it's right here. Steve. I bet the heel's right here. Hey, major right here. I bet you it's right here. I'm gonna measure right here. 21. Major to right. Actually, my, Mike was right. Right here would be. Say that louder for the camera. Mike was right. <laughs> Cause this might just be a drag. Cause it, it is kind of narrow there. So I'd say about right here. That would be the, the heel. He probably drug his foot right Could here. Could be a drag or something like that. When you look at the actual impression, because it's that right goes here. too much to narrow on the heel. It's right here, yeah. like but, Mike said. That's, that That's 20, 20 and a quarter. He's That's 10 foot tall. It rained a little bit on it. Okay. It didn't yeah. rain very long. He's 10 foot tall. Well, I can't deny that last night that was a Bigfoot. That's as tall as the knocking and tall as the basketball goal. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I filmed it. See that? Look. Yeah. It was just done. I mean, that is. But yeah, that's where it was crashing all the limbs at, knocking and, I don't know, throwing rocks or something. Small limbs. A lot of noises last Mike, night. Mike, you want to talk about the activity last night? Kind of what happened? You got You're it probably in? the one needs to talk about it. Okay, because, I'll because do it. you were 
keep it open. If you okay. want me to hold your thing. Yeah, okay. Yeah, if you want to hold it, um, yeah, just make sure we're in the center. Alright. Alright. Both of you guys. Okay. Okay, Mike Scott here, Understanding Bigfoot. We're here with Miguel and Sasquatch Theory. And to continue this documentary, we had some nice activity last night when the sun went down. Miguel, you want to tell us some of the things that were going on? Yeah. We were just talking about Bigfoot stories and our experiences around the fire. And I'm getting down to the last battery, last SD card, and I'm just letting it roll because the lighting's not very good around the fire. And I'm thinking that's the end of the trip. Well, we decide to pop off some vocalizations and Bill does one first and I mean it was a monster call. I don't know how he did it. And then you did your call. I did, I did a couple calls. Mm -hmm. And then I did my loud whoop and um, I guess probably about, what would you guys say, 10 minutes after, 10 minutes after that you could hear this tree that he cut down it was hanging up and you heard it crash so we all thought okay that tree finally went down right and i don't know probably about 30 seconds after that we heard that loud knock where the tree went down Pow! and then you could hear little limb breaks and little popping sounds and we went up here and put some apples in this area when the activity was taken off and you could hear the thing right there and I mean it seemed like that tree lifted back up and crashed back down and it did that two or three times with multiple knocks and you I don't know you could hear all kinds of things so it's almost like the big squatch was lifting weights like yep. like like pressing weights up let it go down up let yep, it go down because I was standing right there in front of the cedar and right. all I heard was crack crack snap and like yeah. it sounded like something was coming down and I could see those those trees swaying, but I I wasn't sure if it was coming down on me. And it seemed like that tree just fell again, but it so, was already laid so, down. So it was the, it was the same tree going yeah, up and it, down. It must have lifted it up and yeah. let it crash back down. But that's when you guys were like, "Are you okay?" And and, and people need to keep in mind it was pitch dark, yeah. and we're not using flashlights or spotlights because we don't want you know we we don't want to run off the sasquatches that are in the area. So we. So it's hard to tell what was actually happening. We could just hear the sounds last night, but now we come back and we see the results um, of what tree is. It's down a little bit further than what it was last night when the sun went down, probably by about eight to 10 feet. So yeah, there's probably some. And my cameras were dead, so it was kind of the, the end of the night. We, we used up all the cards, but I, do, I, I did use my audio recorder and I sat it down on this little log. Right. And when that tree came crashing down right in front of me, it got it all on audio. <laughs> I'm hoping. So. Yeah, so, so this, it's going to be a, a nice additional uh, piece to this uh, documentary. Yeah, no doubt. I had my blood pumping. Actually, you guys saw yeah. to a certain extent. Yeah, it does look like a deer track. But maybe that, but that is a squatch print. He'd probably come up to That's smell. That's broken. Probably come up to smell it. Got, got the scent of the deer. What was going on? At my work, the deer are tearing up, and they're about that hike off the ground, and he didn't know it was rough. Mm -hmm. That squatch did come there to smell or check it out. Yeah. Pretty cool find. I'm interested in what we got on the audio, because that audio is right there in front of him, and yeah. he's doing all kinds of wood knocks. Yeah. Here's one right here. An additional weight might create a deeper impression in the ground. I can't, I don't have a I walked back down there. I couldn't tell, but you probably would be able to. Yeah, well, if anybody could tell, it'd be Steve first. I don't have a glass. I had to get glasses. Yeah, that's where he was hanging out at. That tanner right there. Look at it. <laughs> Six pounds. That's fun, though. You guys think any of those uh, coyote vocalizations were mixed in with a little bit of Bigfoot? We heard yeah, a couple. That I, I heard a couple. Heard yeah, a couple of, uh, with the pretty distinct with a couple of, which is consistent with what we hear um, over over in um, Mississippi River Valley in North Cape County. It's consistent with what we hear. They'll run together. 
Mm -hmm. The adult males will hunt, and there'll be coyotes running with them hunting. We've also seen prints of the squatch mm -hmm. with the coyote prints following deer with deer prints all in the same pathway. Mm -hmm. and, it, and that's consistent with what we hear. It's consistent with what we heard last night. Yeah. The hunters, the, the adult males will do the hunting. Mm -hmm. What what you had, what, like what we had coming in here last night, were females and juveniles, most likely. Because the adult males, we heard them off in the distance out doing the hunting with the coyotes. Mm -hmm. And that 20-inch print that, we're, that we have got documented, yeah, you know, you're talking about a nine to ten foot tall squatch, but that's still that's still considered, you know, teenager status because those adult males would be, you know, eleven to thirteen foot tall. Mm -hmm. So. Knocks <laughs> and knocks <laughs> and limb breaking and another tree sounded like it went down. Another one? Yeah. Look here. We measured this. That's that big foot print, 20 inch, right there. What's doing that? Well, there is a deer print there we found, but Bigfoot was here. Probably spike buck. Well, we thought it was Bigfoot at first, but there is some deer prints, but that that, that measured exactly the same one as over there, 20 and You sure that's a print, dude? Yep. So that was my thinking is that it'd be deeper, but down in the creek, that's what they look like. Well, you, you got that rocky. They, they, they're, it is rocky, so it's hard to see. Do so you think a deer did that? A deer could do that, I guess. Yeah. yeah it's pretty rough. I think okay. you're probably looking at And it was a lot drier yesterday, like it rained this morning a little yeah. bit, so. Okay, so after I went to bed, what happened? Um, you, 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 I was standing you right there in front of that cedar. And it seemed like a big tree just went down. Crack. Well, we heard it. But there's no tree that went down. It's almost like that tree that he cut down. Like it lifted it up or like got on top of it and pushed it down. I couldn't see because it was so dark. Because Miguel says it's right in front of me. It's almost like he's like 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 lift away. He lifted that tree up and let it drop again. It was so loud. You, because you don't. Yeah, see everybody's it. like, "Are you all right?" Because <laughs> the proximity of where that took place to where he was, you had to go down in the valley. It wasn't that far away. Because mm -hmm. we were finding these things down in the creek bottom, and I'm like, "Oh, well, I mean, it is that size, but it's not deep enough." And they come down and come back up, and I mean, that's where this thing came from last night. So, and that one track in the creek, it was filled up with water, like it was fresh. But the lollipop tree, have I been down there? No, I guess, yeah. Yeah. I put some apples right there at the edge of the wood woods line, but they didn't take it. And it was literally right there in front of me. I could hear them. He said they're all still They're all still there? Something else. The lollipop's still in the No, the apples that I put out right here, they're still there. Oh, you had checked the lollipop. But that dog, you should have seen him. He was stretching out, looking over here. Like, he was almost like crawling off your lap trying to... Lulu. Yeah, trying to see what was going on. Staring straight into this direction. Oh yeah, yesterday she was on the, uh, she, heard, she heard some stuff over here and she was sitting on my lap and she actually was sleeping and come out of her blanket and was stretching her head out way off of the side of the uh, chair for about 20 minutes or so. So All right. she did hear something over here and out of her comfort zone come out of her blanket. Well, there was still noise going around Broadway. Oh yeah, and knocks and all kinds of stuff. Her head was just like this, fixated on this area. It finally quieted down about nine o'clock. Yeah. And then stayed quiet the rest of the night. So I just cut that tree down, Bill. It was still hanging out. I know. I thought somebody was stuck out here in the mud or something. <laughs> Coyotes went off like crazy last night, and then oh, between the vocalizations, good. you could hear like a woo -hoo or something, while, you know. You can hear an odd one. We all yeah. You know that's Dave. Uh, what's his name's theory is that's their hunting partners, their pets. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, that's more than his theory. I think he's experienced it on his property. He's seen them. He's seen the. He's seen the leisurely activity with the coyotes and the squatch. Oh, I guess well, the gifting side is for I had a lot of fun last night. I had fun. <laughs> yeah, Lulu was fixated over this area for about 20 minutes. It seems like that's where everything's coming from. Mm-hmm. Whether they're coming from across the road or from or from the, that cedar. I was hearing one there, 
one in the middle and one over there where you said you heard one. There was one that came right up where where Sarah was at. I mean, it's not like they were just crawling up through those leaves. That's mm -hmm. what it sounded like. Yeah, that's what I heard, like something rustling through those leaves where you said that one was laying at, yeah. but a little bit more around the house. Better hope you're not calling the boy Sarah. That's all I got to say. Well, what about the guy named Sue? <laughs> that's what I mean. <laughs> you know how he turned out. He was dead on the flood. My name is Sue. How do you do? It looks like they're all there still. Everything's still there. Yeah, I kind of thought they probably still would be because we were too close. But they came in and checked out those those vocals that we did. Yeah. You did the first one, he did the second one, and I did the third one. And it worked. One of them a brought them in. Those would be gone. But they, yeah. they would be I want to get a piece of uh, tin, put it around the bottom half of that tree, so the raccoons can't crawl, can't climb up in that tree. Oh yeah, that's a good idea. It might better come from the top, but they won't be coming from the bottom. Mm -hmm. Help you, if you put a piece above those apples too, they won't be able to even do that, will they? They make it very difficult. Yeah, so we'll do that. Well, it was a lot of fun last night, man. I'll say that. <laughs> uh -huh. All right, let's do it. I'll name it that way. That's where it comes from. Well, you, does that hurt your ears? No. Well, they ring a little bit, and then yeah. I can't hear the Bigfoot response. <laughs> A whoop. Yeah, I heard it. He heard it too. I did too. Yeah, I heard it. Y'all did? Yeah. Right over there. I like got the direction right this time. Yeah. We all got it. <laughs> yeah, it was like a female. You know, it wasn't an alpha male. You think it was an alpha? It wasn't an oh, alpha male. It sounded like a female to me. Like it could have been a female or a uh, teenager. Wow, I've never experienced a, a call back in the morning. Well, they're probably fixing to go back in the hills into their area. What's, the what's that way? Deeper forest? He told me that last week in woods. It's all woods. See, you, you hit Highway E, mm -hmm. and there's still woods there, but then it starts thinning out a little bit, and then it goes back into woods. That way, basically, it's just woods. I mean, for miles and mm -hmm. miles and miles. Yeah. I can't believe we just got a call back. I can't believe that. I doubt this thing picked it up. Yeah, that was so that. far yeah. away. <laughs> wow. <laughs> so, when are we going to do this again? Now you guys are up for it. If you guys experience any more activity, let me know. I we like will do that, here. Miguel. We will definitely keep in touch, and we will. Uh, yeah, we'll take you out won't there. Be, where we this go is to. our first venture together. It won't be our last. Yeah, I appreciate you guys having me out. It was a blast, and there was certainly Bigfoot activity last night. We appreciate night. the work you're doing in, in this yeah, in this sure. realm and in, in, in the heart of Missouri, and bringing attention to the uh, Sasquatch situation that covers our state and mm -hmm. the country. And, it, and it's really, really, I um, have a lot of respect for the work you're doing with Sasquatch Theory, and we're just glad to be a small part of it. Oh, I appreciate it. And likewise, you guys check out so, Understanding Bigfoot. That right. was so freaking cool last night. Oh, it was. You kept saying, oh, I love this place. Yeah, <laughs> so yeah I cool love here. it, man. Yeah, yeah that, it. that's how it turned to like with my property after I saw the Sasquatches, I started realizing, man, this is the coolest place ever. Right here yeah. where I live. <laughs> yeah. We need to get you a big old fire pit out there. We'll come out your place. Yeah, no doubt. I mean. They come right up in there, they get down on all fours, and they just crawl right up in here. Check what's over the hill. And then just lay there in that nice bed of leaves and just. Watch the house. Watch the house. HBO. <laughs> Their exit doors the entire forest, so any way they go, they're gonna be hitting woods again. Oh yeah, they can get. They have several, di many different escape routes. They can mm -hmm. go where they want to. Yeah. You know, your dog will come over here at the edge of the forest. And sit and watch. 
Yeah. He's waiting for him. Yep. He's waiting for him to come. Oh, Bill didn't hear that story. Did he? But yeah, I think he did. the dog coming out of the woods over there? Yeah. yeah. He's, he's and that dog aware. heard that tree come down, you know? Why would a dog go over there at nighttime and check that out and hang out there? Yeah. I'm glad I'm glad to get along because that was my biggest worry about putting these apples up was my dog's getting hurt. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so I don't feel like I have to worry about that anymore. So now we can really throw some stuff out here. If we Whatever they might like better, like we say, we can get some chicken bones. Hey, you can try different things. I different mean, things now. Eggs this time of the year, raw eggs. Peanut butter jars, yeah. open up the lids. <clears throat> and you know you really got something if they leave you the lid. Yeah. <laughs> Put it on there tight. We've done that before. Uh huh. Yeah. It works. Took them a long time, but we came back and the peanut butter jar was finally just empty. Well, really? I mean, clean. Licked clean? Like, there wasn't any peanut butter in there? Nothing. Oh, well. Yeah, that's what I hear. Uh, a lady in North Carolina, she says they'll, they'll lick them clean. Nothing left. The, uh, I had a gifting tombstone at the cemetery. I take care of my can contest to this but we uh, did put a peanut butter uh, on tombstone dude that's weird we did man. that <laughs> look who you're talking about <laughs> hey now don't don't record <laughs> whole lot of fun you got something scraping on that tree too mm -hmm. yep well they scraped the heck out of that yeah good little buck around here that tree's dead it ain't coming back no well we see deer up in here we see foxes up in here Oh, you got a beaver too. A beaver? beaver yeah. That. Yeah. You have a beaver in that. Beaver Creek. They're making dam down in there. There's sticks that are like shoot off, you know, that point the beaver do. Yeah. Uh, poor little thing. There's no less water down there. 